our students welcome to weekend coloring I don't know what I'm gonna call this but anyway this is a coloring tutorial so I want to do this every weekend is just have a, a nice quick coloring tutorial where I sit down and I color and I talk to you about comic book related stuff so this is the first of it this is my character from trials of the samurai clown my comic book so this is like the original and this is a copy and this is the color this is the finished product so you know during the process of doing this I talked to you about in this particular uh, video I talked to you about creating a character creating an original and a good character and uh, at the end I talked to you seriously about creating comic books so if you're somebody that wants to create a comic book I mean if you're really really serious about creating a comic book stick with it to the end and I give you some really really good information that could either make you go all the way to doing comic books or make you realize this is really not for you so as I said this is the finished product so let's get going with it and stay through it because like I said there is some good information in there that you could use if you are serious about doing comic books or even drawing so all right let's get going with the video all right welcome back to another video and this one I'm going to do a coloring because I said I want to do a lot more coloring I spent all that money on these pens here so you know for me not to use them would totally be a waste of my money so I'm gonna color up my character this is the samurai clown from my book trials of the samurai clown book number five I'm working on book number seven right now number six is actually being colored so and while I color I figure I will talk about some things like character designs as well or designing a good character so let me get myself together and then all right so let's get started so okay these these just in case somebody might have asked these are touch twin this is the brush set this is set B and this is more of the deeper richer color this is not like the pale paisley colors that you can get you can get a set A and a set B and the, the set A is, is kind of like, like wildflowers, like a real paisley. I don't know if you, if you don't understand what paisley is. It's just a, it's like a washed out kind of color. Like if you do a lot of far off backgrounds, you would, it'd be bleached out. Like the blue sky wouldn't be as blue, blue, it faded blue. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm looking over there. These are Copic, Copic markers and, um, the reason I'm using coping markers is skin color. These, this set does not give you a complete uh, skin color. So these are old coping markers that I bought to test them against the Touch Twins. And I like the Touch Twins better. But I still had the coping markers, so might as well use them before they dry out. But as I said, I like the coping markers better. Just, just me. The Copic, I like the Touch Twin better. I'm sorry, Copic. Sorry, I know you guys won't give me no what's the name now. They won't give me any uh, endorsements or let me endorse them because of what I just said. So as I try to do this, let's talk about character creation. Creating a character. What makes a good character? What makes a good character is number one originality and I'm not gonna say believability because you don't really have to believe it you know I don't believe you know Superman or, or um, Goku or um, One Punch Man but I mean they're good characters because of what they go through not so much Goku and Superman but uh, who was I saying oh, I'm trying to think of the one believability really and I screwed up because that's supposed to be white on his face believability and the things that he goes through makes for a great story if you can find or you can create a character that people can identify with one and where the story is just so great that they can't really deny or turn away from it then you have a good character but if you have a character and you say well, my character can fly and he has super speed and he's invulnerable, he's inv invulnerable and he has like uh, lasers that come out of his eyes and plasma beams that come from his hands and this and that. You just describe basically just about every character out there 
And the thing about young artists or people to, trying to develop their character is the pride. They don't want their character be character to be unbeaten. Oh, my character's got to be the best. You know, he'll beat your character. He'll beat Thanos. He'll beat everybody. And the problem is, if you have a door that nobody can open, no matter what they use or what they try, it'll never open. Eventually, people will get tired of trying to open that door and walk away. So if you create this character that is just unbeatable, I mean, every issue, every book, he's just mopping the floor with everybody, then eventually they're going to come and say, you know what, why am I wasting my time reading that? He's not going to get beat by this character. I don't care how many enemies or bad guys or whatever you create. People know he's not going to get beat. So you have to have a character with a flaw, a really good flaw, so people can kind of identify with that because... Who doesn't have a flaw? Everybody has a flaw in their in their in their trait or their what is the word characteristics. So we can all identify with that. It's like if you look at school shows, those were the most popular shows that ran the longest. School shows about you know kids in high school because just about everybody went to high school and you met the girl that you wanted to be with and there's the bully and the teacher that you hate or the class that you hate and you know trouble with the principal and all that everybody can identify that and that's why with that and that's why for one reason those shows are very popular so if you can come up with a character that people can identify with then you got a hit right there and of course, if the story is different, if you got a good story going along with your character, then all the more. That's one reason why I really wasn't in the Superman. I was in the beginning, but I saw, you know, that every five minutes or every new issue, here's a stronger person to beat Superman because he was just, you know, he was just too strong. And then they had to get into the, you know, the 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 god realm shall we say and you know he was beating these people too so and that's kind of the same with dragon ball he's 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 a god now he's a saying god he, and he surpassed that god power and got new power so it's like how strong can he get before uh, there's a level off or something and there's always somebody stronger if you, if you really look at it he is you know stupid strong but yet there's somebody else that is stupid stronger, which causes him to have to up his power even more. So it's like, okay, when does it stop? When does it stop? I mean, everybody wants it's like, yeah, yeah, he gets stronger. He can get strong to beat the guy. But when you look at the level of power he's at, you say he's past a god. Now, what, what goes after that? So that's, that's one reason I kind of stopped getting into Dragon Ball because it was cool in the beginning, but now it's just all I want to do is fight to get my powers up. And the whole show is about, oh, here comes somebody else. We're going to fight him. We're going to fight him. So where's the story at? And the only story is, oh, he's going to destroy Earth. Goku must come back and, you know, get strong to defeat him. And it's like, come on now. Let's, let's, let's do better. So, yeah. All right. So as I was saying. If you have a character, if you develop a character, try to give that character some flaws because that's what it's all about. The, the, the greater the flaw or the greater the weakness, the better your character will be because now somebody can uh, exploit those weaknesses and then use them to not just defeat him, but to, to scare him. So that he won't be so cocky anymore, you know, it's like, this is why a lot of um, shows, people don't get married, shows, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, and I'm, I'm hesitating because I'm trying to think of uh, some good examples, because they'll always use your, well, look at comic books, every time somebody get married, they die, basically in, almost in that same show, TV show, comic book, because they use that as a weakness you know oh number one he feels bad he's gonna feel bad we're gonna kill off his wife so we can have that that drama thing in there so the character can feel bad 
Number two, she just doesn't belong. Now, I'm not going to say doesn't belong. I'm just going to say that if they were used, their character was used just to give more of an emotional, get more of an emotional response from the reader. But the thing is, it's been done so much that, you know, if you're a longtime fan of reading um, scripts and, and stories and so forth, you know, you know, what's about to come. You work on, you know, work on this relationship so much, so much, you know, trying to date the person and get to know the person and going out and you have all these troubles that, oh, like just say for Spider-Man, for instance, you know, oh, I got a date now with, you know, this is Mary Jane. We got it after, you know, talking to her for months. Now I finally got a date and the night's going to be good because I'm going to lay all my cards on the table. And then suddenly here comes the bad guy. So now he can't go. So you go through that over and over and over. And then finally, when you get to the person and you get to know the person, they either get kidnapped or killed or both just to get that, that response from the character. And my man here has pockets. He has pockets that I never drew in. So anyway, this is the samurai. If you're new to this, if you just saw this and you're like, oh, he's doing a clown. This is a samurai clown. This is uh, from my book, which I just showed you, and he's an assassin. The circus is full of assassins. It's, this, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a circus with assassins, basically. And he is a top assassin. And when you join a circus, the number one rule is you can never leave because you have all these secrets. So he did... The one thing he didn't want to do and he got fed up and he left so now the circus is after him to bring him back dead or alive but the thing is what he did he did for it was a job that he did for um someone or some organization and that organization is also after him as well because he didn't because he botched the job he basically just just didn't do it and he just came back to the circus and he left so not only is the circus after him it's kind of like the mafia is after him as well but this guy is a top notch assassin one of the top ones in the circus and the circus is feared by all of the mob families that's how dangerous the circus is they are truly feared so they know this guy's, you know, no pushover. So going after him won't be easy. So we don't know his name. You won't know his name maybe until the end. But he has a samurai sword because when he was young, when he was a kid, he loved the samurai movies he loved those kind of movies martial arts and samurai and he loved making people laugh as a young child so when he was nine his mother gave him uh, a birthday party and she invited a clown to do stuff and the clown did all these magical acts and acrobatics and so forth and of course told jokes and balloons and stuff clowns do and then he was hooked after that he knew what he wanted to become in life he wanted to become a clown so he started and i'm looking for a color doing his clown stuff in school you know making people laugh and sock puppets and so forth and he got beat up a lot so that caused him to have to study self-defense take self-defense because you know you get beat up in school for being a clown of course you want to protect yourself so because he loved those old samurai movies what else is he going to take up but the sword? So in doing a job one day, he kept his sword, his little wooden sword, in the back of his car. And he went to do a birthday party for a little kid. And he, little did he know, the, the mom had divorced the husband because of his drinking and his um, violence. So... When he did the party for the little kid, 
the mom was so happy that she, at the end of it, you know, she hugged him and gave him a, a kiss. But the husband was like across the street with his little drunk friends watching, you know, the mom, you know, be nice to the clown. So because they were drunk, one of his friends was like, oh, looks like your, your old lady got a new man now. So when the clown went to his car to put all his little clown gear and stuff in, these guys came up behind him and they attacked him. But he had his wooden sword like right there in the trunk of the car. So he made a little short work of those guys with his sword. And just so happens that the ringmaster, who's in charge of the circus, was like, right there kind of like in his car like right there and he saw what happened and he knew the guy's skill he could see the, the clown's skill so he hired him he went up and asked him hey would you like to you know be in a circus instead of just doing these little you know side jobs entertaining you know kids and stuff so of course that was his goal to make people laugh so he um he joined the circus so as they went as time went on they basically told him what the circus was about and it's not about like just, oh, we're going to kill this guy right here. It was about doing high profile jobs like, I don't want to say senators or whatever, but like kings or, or, or dictators that would, you know, that are doing wrong. So, you know, of course he's, you know, kind of into it. Yeah, you know, these guys are doing wrong and these are starving people. They're starving people and taking their money and so forth. But I mean, these are people like who really, really deserve that stuff. So that's how he got into it in the beginning. And then as time goes on, of course, you know, he's going to just start doing the jobs, period. So that was kind of like his introduction to becoming an assassin. And because he was so good, he became one of the most feared assassins out there. But when he did that job that made him ashamed because all his life he just wanted to be a clown, it made him ashamed. He went back and he tattooed his face. It was a permanent tattoo with this sad clown. Where's my book at? With this sound, sad clown face. So that wherever he goes, he'll know, you know, what he did. Like this is the this is the permanent marker that he did. Not marker, but tattoo that he did on his face. It's just kind of a sad clown. So it's kind of like hiding in plain sight. Wherever you go, you will always take your shame with you. For what you did so yeah he shaved his head it's basically like permed it back there so it stays like this and then his 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 nose he only wears his nose he puts his nose on the side of his head it's just like sticks on the side of his head like suction cup and he only wears it when he's going to kill or do a performance as they say they don't say kill because if you if you're being taped or you know or or Record it or there's bugs or something like, you know, in the circus, in the office somewhere. And he's like, oh, go kill this guy. It's like, oh, we're going to need to do a special performance for this guy. So they call it a performance. I'm still looking for my colors. Knocking all this red out. So, yeah, I wanted a story that was going to be different from, oh, he's got superpowers. Everybody's got superpowers. I wanted to, instead of going... Up on the chain of, you know, uh, strength. I wanted to come down. I wanted to be down to earth. Nobody flying. Nobody has, you know, laser vision or anything like that. Because when you have a red pen, a red pen. Where's, where's the camera? If you have a red pen, a red pen, a red pen, a red pen. And then you have a green pen over here. People are going to start looking at this green pen because every all the other ones are red. So... If your character is this, 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 people are not going to look at that. They're going to look at something that's different. So I wanted something different, and this is what it is. Bad thing about this stuff is bleeding. I'm putting the colors on too fast, and it's bleeding through. Yellow eyes and yellow around the lips. orange hair now also this guy has gadgets this is kind of like the james bond of um clowns james bonds of clowns okay yeah james bond of clowns the 
Daisy can spray a lot of things, either just water, it can spray poison, it can spray acid, it could gases, whatever, you know, whatever. And um, it's wired through the costume and on the belt. And on the belt, he always has these little um, compression, little compression things. Like if you have a BB gun, it's like those, but each compression capsule has something different in it. So he can kind of like hit a button and this one will open up or that one will close over this one. And he can control what comes out of the daisy. He can also take the daisy and use it as like a throwing star or a boomerang by folding it, the leaves up. You have the two leaves, the boomerang shape, and it comes back. The sword has like stuff in the handle. Like um, if he ever gets poisoned, he has the toxins, anti anti toxins in the in the um, handle. I just lost it for a second. His shoes has things like a smoke and spring the heels will spring out for you know if he wants to jump a little higher and it's like a, um uh not compression hydraulic little springs in there and that's one reason why i made his shoes so big number one clown shoes number two i wanted to have room i wanted to be more believable to have gadgets in his shoes uh, uh, unlike iron man's boots which are just regular size boots but yeah he's got thrusters and everything else in there i wanted his stuff to be believable because his foot it's probably about like, comes to right about here, but you have all this room in there. He has a little shotgun in here, a double barrel shotgun, one shot. And as I say, hydraulic springs, because the shoes are really, really, really big. And that's something he never really takes off is his shoes. So let me finish coloring because I'm, I'm trying to talk and I'm losing my, my composure at the same time. And the bad thing about this is when you rush these pens, because they're, they're new, they put out so much ink that they will bleed through, not bleed through the paper, but go past the lines that I want them to go past. So usually when I color, especially a big area, I only color a certain part at a time, then I'll go back with my second color because it's still wet, the, the, the ink is still wet, and I want it to blend in as best as it can. Instead of doing the whole thing and then it dries up. And it's hard to blend together. Because I usually use three colors at one time, but this one I'm using two. So I'll do the first color, the second sh shadowish color, and then I'll come back again with the first color to try to blend them in together. And usually I'll have a line like here, this line where I'll stop. This had that had an open line, so that had no line, so it's going to be bad if it leaves a marker line. Like something like this, instead of doing that whole leg because this line here separates them, I'll stop right there and I'll come back with my other color. I'll make my marks. And then while it's still wet, switch back to the original color and try to blend those two in while it's wet. Leaving my light area for my light, for my light area, leaving my light area for my light area. So I said I want to try to do a coloring every weekend. And put out teaching videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If not, it'll be like a Monday and Friday or something like that, or Monday and Wednesday. And then still do my coloring tutorials on Saturday just to put more content out because I've been lazy I've been letting other stuff get in my way for not and not doing what I need to do 
to put more stuff out. So the shadow is always going to be that shadow there. And I want to do like different things like some cell shading, um, some regular blending, coloring, just, just to, you know, add more stuff and increase your skills because the more you do, the better you become. And that's just how you got to do it. Sometimes you have to just do stuff for the fun of it. And that's something I advise artists when you draw, just draw to have fun. Don't draw to, to be serious or try to be the best thing out there every time. I understand you want your art to be seen and you want people to say, oh, he's good. But the only way to do that is to make mistakes. And a lot of people don't want to make mistakes in the beginning. They, they just, I want to put my pencil down and I want it to be good the first time. And that's not how it's done. You have to make your mistakes. If you play ball or if you do a video game or whatever, you're going to make mistakes. And you don't just throw your basketball down and say, oh, I'll never play again. Or you don't just bust up your video game, even though I've seen people do that. But never play, and never play again. They go back and they pick it up later. It's like, you know what? I'm going to beat this level. I'm going to get to that boss. I'm going to beat that boss. And I'm going to move on to the next level. And people do that. But I've seen people with drawing. They want to draw one time. and think they're going to get it. And they don't get it that one time. And they just kind of just give up. And these people were not meant to be artists. Just like if you're not meant to be a ball player then you give up and you don't do it anymore and this is supposed to be round like that and this is a photocopy so if I screw up I can always go to the original and recopy it and do it again and that's a good thing for you to do if you're practicing coloring until you become like this the world's greatest colorer make a copy of your drawing then you can color it over and over and over and over again. Even if you don't like the color that you chose, you say, okay, that's all right, because it's just a, it's just a photocopy anyway. So I'll just redo it again. Other lines, and I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at all the lines that I have missed on this drawing. And then this purple down here, because this shirt is like multiple colors. So my original, I missed all of that on my original. For shame. So, need a purple. Don't have a purple. Yes, I do, but it's too dark. And I always have a test color piece of test color paper. So you can test your colors. Jesus, that is so light. And this one is... So dark purple. This is about as close as I can get with purples. So this is why you need to set A and set B, but that at $270, that's kind of high for you. You, know, you don't have to get the set of 60. Pulling this over because they're like right here. You don't have to buy the set of 60. You can buy the 24, uh, 10. And that's one thing I discovered. You won't use all of those, you, you know, if you buy a set of 110, let's just say, you will not use 110 colors. You use your basic colors over and over again. So save your money. You don't, you don't need, you know, the big set just to say, oh, I got the, you know, the biggest set of pins. Unless you are like an animator or something like that. You know, if you're just starting out, just get you a 20, 20 set or 24 set. That's the biggest you need because you, as I say, you're going to use uh, certain ones anyway. And then a lot of these things are just like two shades of whatever color off away from something. I think I'm going to have to use this whole purple because this purple is just so dark compared to what I just put there. And I will show you why you don't need a hundred and some colors. Yeah, just do this. And then see what you can do with this other one. Just because I don't think it's going to really do. No. 
It's not going to work. So the reason you don't need 120 colors is if you take this purple, for instance, I put this purple down. So you got a purple. So if I wait three or four minutes for it to dry, when I come back again, let's just like look at this. This is the purple that I put down right here. So if I go back again, I don't want it to bleed through, and I do right here, you see how dark that purple is compared to that first first line that I did? Now if I wait for that to dry and I come back and I do it again, it'll be even darker. And that's the thing with when you get 120 pins, like you'll get, let's just use these two right here, these two. You'll get like this shade of gray, this shade of gray, and maybe like this shade of gray. This is to say they're just like one notch darker. And that's the same thing I just did with this purple. I used a purple, it came out a light purple. I went over it again, it got darker purple. I went over it again, it will go even darker purple, which is exactly what this is. So you don't have to buy a hundred pins because that's all they do is they have your, your beet purple, your middle purple, your light purple, your baby purple, and you can do that with one, one color. That's one reason I like these pins because you're able to do that with these pins. You might be able to do it with Copics, but at Copics at what is it, five hundred dollars or something crazy like that? Copics markers? That's just that's ridiculous. I mean, these are like I said, two seventy. Look at a set of sixty Copic markers. That's a car payment. So you see the purple here. Now let me go over the purple once more since it's a little dark, and you can see how dark that just went on. That's a perfect purple shadow color with the same pin. So you really don't need to start out with 120 markers or how many ever they're going to offer you. Just get your set of 12. Start out with 12. Then if you need be, then go to 24. And if, like I said, if you're doing animation or something like that and you just have to, have to, have to have it, then go for it. So the next color is green. That is a deep forest green, and this is a watery kind of green. What is this color? Does it even say? No, it just gives you a number, really. It should say, but I can't see this little mint green light. So is this mint green dark? This is emerald green. What is wet on my hand? Like oil from this pen. Now, let me check this out because I don't want to drop this all on my drawing. It is some kind of alcohol. This It is an alcohol based marker, but it's like they put too much alcohol because my whole pen is wet. I need something to wipe this pen down with. But it's not wet, green wet. It's just wet, clear wet. As long as it's not shaking off, we're good. So let me use this light mint green and then come back over it with a emerald green. Or maybe I could just keep going with the light mint green to make it the color that I want without going too dark. So let me try that. And while that dries, let me get some orange for his hair. Your test color sheet. Always have your test color sheet. That's more of a brown. This is more of a yellow orange. I need a yellow and an orange, which I don't. It's amazing. It doesn't have an orange color. I guess that's about as orange as it's going to get. And these two are so close together. It's ridiculous. This and this one and this one. As I'm saying, you don't need 120 pins because you just use one and get darker and darker. So let me use this, this yellow then. Maybe I'll make it because it's a red orange hair he has. Because all clowns have orange hair. Let me see if I can go with this one. I can't believe there's no orange. I 
this is about as orange as it's gonna get. Of course, I can always go over and make it a little darker when I go over it again. Back to the mint green. I just want to be wet again and drip all over me. This top is wet, wet. All right, mint green. Second time going over it and you see how dark it is compared to the first time. I know if I was going to get a sponsorship from any kind of pens, I'm not getting them now because I'm shooting them down. I'm just trying to tell you so you can save money. Let that dry. Go over it again. Next color is a blue. This guy's multiple, his multiple color clown shirt. And the other side is white. Let that dry. Let's go back to the orange hair. Maybe throw some brown in there to give it a little darker feel to it. And I would say never open your pens, pop your pens over your paper because if it is water or something, oil or whatever, under in it it might screw your paper up screw your drawing up and I know you don't want that these are burgundy these bands these wristbands and these armbands are kind of like a Kevlar so you can use it to like block I wouldn't say bullets but you know it's gonna hurt but still if you get cut or stabbed or you know you can use it and block it and you know it just it, it helps as I said the guy's full of Full of gadgets. There is a burgundy, but it is probably so dark. It is so dark, which is why I'm saying you need is there a light brown. It wouldn't hurt to get the Paisley set. But Brian, you just said you don't need. No, there are certain colors you will need. <laughs> That's brown, brown. All right, so we're going to use this on top of the burgundy. I know that's pink, but it will work, I think. Top of this deep burgundy. And it shouldn't be any color left over because it's not shiny. So I can go back over it again with this light pinkish. To maybe blend in that burgundy a little more. The face is white with maybe a light blue as a shading, but I don't have blue that that's light. So I'm not going to touch that. You can always use colored pencils on these things as well. Let me get all this out the way. This table is a mess, a serious mess. This is white. The daisy is actually pink. Let's try this, which is a pink. Pink with black. The bulb is black.
Color is another thing you have to think about when you're doing your superhero because color is basically just used up. Everything is, you know, everything is just gone color-wise. So you have to find a, a good color, a different color to do your character because you don't want to use Superman's colors or you don't want to use... Uh, Vision's colors or, or Wolverine's colors, you know, so it's just it's just, just something you have to work with as well to create your own original character. That color just blent in so much because it's really wet. It might work if it dries. So <clears throat> the belt is brown. Use a light brown. And go dark. Oh, that's just dark all the way already. It will lighten up, though. That's the one thing about these. They will lighten up, so you can go over it again. It scares you in the beginning because it is so dark, goes down so dark, but it lightens up. The belt buckle is blue. For whatever reason, dark blue. And that is a dark gray, the belt itself. The pockets are deep orange brown, the sides are deep orange brown. Let's just go for it. They will lighten up and I can add more to it. Okay. Don't buy markers unless you're ready to use them. That's that. I think that'd be a word of wisdom right there. Because I have so many sets of markers that I use one time, and those things dried out. But those are water, the water, the water base markers. If you get the oil-based markers or oil -based, if the, the alcohol-based markers, you're going to have to buy refills. And the refills are like six, seven dollars. That's for these touch twins anyway. Now, now Copics, I don't know how much they're going to cost. But I mean, you know, you got to get it. If you plan on coloring a lot, you definitely have to get those refill markers. Or else you just waste you know, hundred dollars, eighty dollars, whatever you did spend for your pens the more you buy the more different color refills you need to buy that's another thing and some of them you can't even find I looked when I, I, I bought these it was touch touch five like before they named it touch twin I don't know why they changed the name but they had so many it was a set of maybe 60 I think it was but because let's say the numbers, each one of these are numbered. If you can see this, if the camera will zoom in on it, let's see if I can zoom in it. Like YR33, you know, they might have like a YR35, YR34, YR37, and it's hard to get some of these other colors like YR37 because that's not your standard color that you use all the time. So there were a lot of colors that I could not find with the uh, with the first set I bought and that really turned me off because they were they were um drying up because I was doing a lot of coloring for my YouTube channel and with this YouTube channel and I couldn't find the refills for the ones that were my favorite ones that I was using a lot so that kind of like turned me off to coloring because I couldn't find them and the ones that I did find god that's so light the ones that I did find were well, number one they were the wrong number and they were just so expensive to try to get it to refill, which I couldn't refill because it was the wrong color. Just something else to think about when you 
want to do this stuff. Let's go with my mint green one more time and see if I can get it a little darker. And it did go a little darker, but if it lightens up or if it lightens up when it dries, I'll just go over it again. So, wow, it did go through, but it didn't go through. So, and this is cardstock. This is, this is not regular copy paper like this stuff because this copy paper here, right here is regular old photocopy paper. Cardstock is harder. It's that stuff when you get a greeting card, it's kind of made out of that. It may be a little thinner than that greeting card stuff, but it's card stock. You have, it goes by weight, like it might say 110 pound. Um, not that it weighs 110 pounds, but that's what it's called. You know, 110 pound or 80 pound or whatever. The higher the number, the thicker the paper is. The sword is brown as well. Where's the brown? Where's the brown? Where's the burgundy brown? That's one thing about coloring I, that I don't, I'm not crazy about is you, you, it becomes a mess. You take all your pins out and it becomes a mess. And then I try to put them back in the case at the right, at the right point, when I, you know, next to each other. So I don't have to kind of look for a particular color. The sword has throwing knives. And the grip, and yeah, the people that know swords are going to get on me for this. The thread that is wound around the grip can be taken off. So basically, let's just example one in one of the stories. He's pushed off a cliff, and he takes the sword and he throws it, and the wine unravels, kind of like a fishing fishing rod, and the sword goes into the side of the cliff. And he has a string to hold on to, and he can pull himself back up. He just has a, this is a lot of tricks and gadgets that he has in his arsenal. As I say, the James Bond of clowns. And a light silver gray, that's a green gray, cool gray. There's a steel gray. Or metal gray, cool gray, metal gray that I used to use on my other set. And it was so hard to find that color. That's too dark. And a green gray is going to leave that green tint. That is maybe cool enough. for the sword. So the bottom of his heels are white. I add a little bit of shade to that just because I can. The face mask is white, which I usually use a blue tint for that, so I'm not gonna mess with that. So in actuality, I guess I'm finished. One more hit of this belt, this brown, dark brown for this belt, just because, because it's so small anyway, you, you can't really see the the detail to it. So as I said, I'm going to have kind of like a coloring every Saturday and save the lessons for the weekdays. And because I want to use my colors and I want to become a better colorist, I'm going to start doing that. And then light gray, light gray is always good instead of using a black to give shadow to your colors. It works with everything because it's so light that it just adds to your existing color. It doesn't stand out like a a gray that you just put gray all over everything it just it adds to the shadow of it all the 
but you don't want to go too crazy. So that's going to be it for this Samurai Clown. Let me pull back so you can get the whole picture. Not too far back because you'll see this incredible mess I have on my desk. Yeah, that's enough. So, Trials of the Samurai Clown. Where's my comic book at? Buried under all of this mess. Pick it up. I'll leave a link in the, in the, below. This is the first, this is the very first color. This is the very first color copy that I have. First time I had this color. It's expensive to do comic books, especially if you want to color it. This one book alone costs five hundred dollars. Yes, I said five hundred dollars to color this thing. You get what you pay for. If you want a fifty dollar book, you can get a fifty dollar coloring job. So doing comic books is not cheap. You know, if you could just draw, if you don't if all you could do is draw, but you need to hire somebody to ink, you need to hire somebody to do the the letters, you need to hire people to do all your stuff. It gets expensive, and if you are young and you say to yourself, "Oh, I've got to put out a comic book," it's a business. I'm telling you, you 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 can do black and white. You can do black and white, but you got all these other black and white books, so you gotta stand out. You gotta make your stuff stand out, and the way you stand out is unless you have like this top-notch art, a different style that um, people are gonna see, or if you um, go color. You got to make your book stand out somehow, some way. And if I see 10 books on my screen, if I go to the comic site on my screen and I see 10 books and they're all black and white and I see one of the books, the 11th book is in color, of course I'm going to look at that book first and I might say, oh, that, you know, and if I open it up and your story, I mean, your art looks good, your color's good, more than likely I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to buy that book. So you have to think about this when you say to yourself, I'm going to start a comic book. It's not, you know, it's, 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 it's a business. It's a business. And you have to have those books. You have to keep kicking those books out. Because if you don't, if you get one book out and it takes you three months to get the next book out, I'm going to forget all about you. So you, it's best to get at least five books out completely done and ready. Get that first book out. Next month, put that second one out. And while you're doing that, continue to get your sixth book and your seventh book. So you can stay ahead. But if you do one book and it took you four years to do that one book and you got it out, how long is it going to take you to do your second book? And if you have a family, if you have a full time job, if you have like dogs and, and raccoons and stuff like that, then you can't devote your full time to doing your book. Then, of course, you're not going to make it. So I would say the best thing is get a group of people. If you can get a group of people that's all sharing the load without having to reach out and pay for somebody, then that's your best bet. That's your best bet. But the problem is, if I want to do a clown book and you want to do a superhero book, and then he wants to do a horror book, and he, you know, what book can you settle on? You guys have to be a team. You have to be a team and say to yourself, we are all going to put this book out. We'll put, let maybe say like five issues of this book out. Then we'll switch over to the horror book. We'll put five issues out and we'll switch over. But you have to have... 100% cooperation. If I'm drawing the clown book and I don't like horror and I say, okay, you got five of my books out to see if the crowd likes it. So let's switch over to the horror book. And I say to myself, I don't want to draw no horror. And I don't put my whole being into it as I did when I did my clown book. Then it's going to show and then everybody's going to be mad. Oh, you don't want to do that. We did help you with yours. And so it, it's a mess. You have to find, if you can get a team that's wholeheartedly into one thing, your chances are pretty good in making it. If you're doing it by yourself and you have kids and a full-time job and school and whatever, chances are slim that you're going to make it. I know it's reality. I'm sorry. It's reality. As I said, just coloring this thing, was that's, that's $500 for one book. For one book. I'm working on the second one now. That's another $500. So if I don't recoup that money from selling these books, then basically I'm just... You know, I'm just biting the bullet myself. So this is why I do other things like YouTube and I do T-shirts and I do other things to make money. And if you have that talent to do stuff like this or to write or create, don't just stay with one thing. And if it's dried up or if it's not making any money, 
use your talent to do other things as well. So this has been a word of wisdom from Brian. The minute of wisdom from Brian. So yeah, you know, do what you got to do to make that money, to be your goal, to make that goal, to be that artist that you want it to be. All right. So as I say, I want, hopefully every Saturday I'll have a color thing out and, you know, words of wisdom and just some, some, some tips on whatever, doing comics, printing comics, whatever, inking, whatever. So yeah, that's going to be it because you guys know I ramble. So I'll see you guys in the next video, which should be coming out Monday. If you're looking at this one, because this is Friday now to be out tomorrow. Monday's the next teaching lesson. All right, I'm out.